Welcome to Internet Broadcast Project. My name is Libya Martin Seharume. I'm a mathematics teacher at uh, Hudisa Technical School. I taught mathematics grade 12 from 1994 to date. And the topic for today is going to be trigonometry. We are specifically going to deal with trigonometric equations. And before we can do anything, I think it is important for us to know our three trig graphs. And uh, I'm having the three graphs here. The first one is the one of y is equal to sine x. The second one is y is equal to cos x. And the third one is y is equal to tan x. Now, we are going to find the general solutions. Why do we need the general solution? It's because if we draw the, if we consider the graph of sine x, you see, the pattern goes like this. We are having the y value as 0 here. We have got 1. We have got 0. We have got negative 1. We have got 0. We have got 1. We will have 0. We will have negative 1. We will have 0. As you can see, we can draw this curve up to infinity. Now, we need the solutions. If we need any number of solutions, we must make use of the general solutions. Now, we are going to have one question here, a question from this. Suppose we want to find the solution for we make y to be 0, 0,5. If we make y to be 0, 0,5, then it means we are going to draw a horizontal line here and as you can see this horizontal line here is going to cut this graph of y is equal to sine x at this point at that point at that point and at that point but if we keep on drawing this curve up to infinity we'll have an infinite number of solutions for this particular problem which is sine x is equal to 0, 0,5. Now, how do we get the general solution for the problem sine x is equal to 0, 0,5? Um, we are going to write it sine x is equal to 0, 0,5. And if we look at our graph here, we can estimate the solutions for that. I've actually drawn this graph so that I'm having the multiples. I've used the square grid and I've used the multiples of 30 degrees and obviously if I look at this uh, 30 degrees is going to be one of the solutions because we want to solve x where y is 0, 0,5. We look again at this other point here we are having 150 degrees as a solution we go to this position, to this point as well. Um, this is negative 210 degrees. And we go to this point again. We are having this point as negative 330 degrees. But now it will not be always the case that you have the square grid in front, of, in front of you or you've got the chance of drawing that particular graph. And how do we go about that? Now, we are having sine x is equal to 0, 0,5. The first step that we must do is to identify the quadrant where sine is positive because the 0, 0,5 is the ratio of the opposite side over a putting side, which is positive. Now, if we use our Cartesian plane, um, they normally have some clues for this and the, the recent one that I've heard is all stupid teachers 
So all these ratios are positive in the first quadrant. Um, in the second quadrant is only sine and its reciprocal which are positive. So we are going to confine ourselves. When we solve this trigonometric equation, we are going to confine ourselves in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. So step one, we have identified the quadrant, so we are going to work in the first and the second quadrant. Let me just uh, get my big picture here. We are working in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. Now, that was step one. We have identified the quadrant. Now, the second step, step two, that was step one, step two, we look for the reference, reference angle. The word reference means we are going to refer to this angle to generate the solution for the equation sine x is equal to 0, 0,5. And now, how do we find the general solution? We take our calculator and we switch it on. I'm having Casio FX82 ES Plus and we press the, this button on your left, top left hand side and we press, we'll be pressing shift and we press sign. By so doing, we are actually pressing the function that is on the floor there. So that will be arc sign. We refer to that as arc sign and then we put 0, 0,5. The Casio was so kind for me to open the bracket for me. I must also be kind to it to close the bracket and then we press equals to and we get the value of 0, 0,5. So, I'm sorry, we get the value of 30 degrees. Now, this 30 degrees, we said we have identified the quadrant. We are working in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. So, we are having 30 degrees in the first quadrant and we are having 30 degrees in the second quadrant. Observe how do I measure my angle. I measure my angle. Let me just rectify this because I think I've made this to be a bit accurate. It must go there. I measure 30 degrees starting from here up to there. That angle is measuring 30 degrees. And again, I also start from the x-axis measure it from here to there and this angle is also measuring 30 degrees. Now, is this the solution for the problem? The answer is yes, the reference, sol the reference angle may be the solution in some instances. It may not be the solution in some other instances. As we go along, you'll see what do I mean. Now that we've got our reference angle, our third step, step number, step number three, I'm sorry, step three, we now count in an anti-clockwise direction, starting from here. Now we want our solution. We start from here up to there. Immediately when we touch that terminal ray, we count the angle there. Now, theta, I'm sorry, x, according to that, will be equal to 30 degrees. Now we can check if we substitute x with 30 degrees in the original solution, we press sine of 30 degrees, press it, you should be getting the answer of 0, 0,5. Now, what will, what will be amazing is this. Press sine of 390 degrees. Oops. The answer is still 0, 0,5. Let's try to press a sine of um, 
sine of 750. Oops, the answer is still positive 0 0.5. Now you can see that we can get an infinite number of, of solution for the, the equation sine x is equal to 0 0.5. But why? Why or how am I getting all these solutions? Am I a magic? Definitely not. I'm not a magic.